No, it's beautiful. And Jackie and I have the same heart for youth ministry because that's where we were, where we encountered the Lord through core members and youth Absolutely. ministers who cared and poured into us. And so there's always that desire to give back. And Sarah, as you said, like those years are so important because they're so formative. But if you're in, you know, a different friend group or a different environment, it can also be very deformative. Yeah. And I experienced that where like this, I was at a big state school that, um, big party scene, yeah. really good Catholic Newman Center that mm-hmm. kept me grounded. Totally. And my last year of college, I, I got off the path a bit. And how, I mean, it, it's so when you're picking a college, um, there's a whole lot to it. And yeah. the culture of the school and, and the friends group and like there, your life can take a very different course mm-hmm. depending on who you surround yourself with yeah. and what you invest in, the relationships, et cetera. Yeah, and that's not even in college. I mean, the young adults. Like, um, we watch a lot of students. I think sometimes people, if, if people are listening to this that are out of college and they're like, well, that was not my experience in college, mm-hmm. you know, because we, I, you know, I love hanging out with young adults. And it's like, yeah, but what, what the Lord wants you to do is to take that same experience that you maybe wanted to have in college and you have to be creative. You have to recreate that as a young adult. So what does that look like? Well, it, you go back to the the glory days of Benedictine when Suave and I were there. It looks like inviting a bunch of people out to go like cosmic bowling or to a concert or to go swing dancing or country line dancing. And guess what? You're the one that's making the calls and saying, we're meeting at seven, we're going here and then we're going to go to IHOP after for breakfast. It's You're the one that's like, hey, we're all going to mass at five and then we're going to go out to dinner. You need and a Sarah Swafford you choleric have, yeah, you have who to get is a like the, in the, the house. Like I'm, I have a very, char- I have a charism of planning. Yeah, you need right? someone yeah. who like loves that kind of stuff. But I told, yeah. I told someone, um, we were talking about this. Um, I was talking about this with another group, but gosh, it breaks my heart. I was, you were just talking about surrounding yourself with the right people. I was doing a young adult event out in California, and it was like a, they did like the mass, and then they had. Um, Like everybody would go out to dinner and they would pick a different restaurant and all this stuff. Well, they've been doing it for years. And I remember this one guy came up to me, really sweet guy, kind of unassuming and um, probably like 27, 28. And he just looked at me and he's like, I'm so glad you're here. And I was like, thanks. And he goes, yeah, I used to be like really a part of this group. But then a couple of years ago, I noticed that people stopped going out to eat after mass, like people stopped going out and stuff. And I said, oh, I said, that's, you know, and it was whenever everyone started texting and doing a lot of like, you know, inviting people over text. And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I used to show up after mass and like everybody was already gone. And I guess I just didn't know where they went. And I just like my heart inside was just breaking. And he's like, and then I found out that I just wasn't on the text chain. Oh. And I was just like, oh, my heart. And so I, I just... I really want to plead with everybody out there. Like, it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're a young married couple, if you're wherever, whatever age you're in, like really make the effort to not only plan things, but because again, you could be a total melancholic, quiet introvert and you can still put out an invite. You can still put out an invite. And so my plead with everyone is make the effort to put out the invite and then also make the effort to make sure that you're including everyone. And I know that you can't be like, making sure that everybody got invited, but you kind of know when you, when you exit mass and stand out in the, you know, in the back for a while, you kind of know who's like lingering. Like I always love going to mass when I travel and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a young adult guy over there who's at mass and he was at mass and then he just like got up and left. It's like, I almost wanted to like track him down and be like, try to introduce him to somebody, you know, but Th- that's what I do. I wish I had like a flyer. I know. And it's be like, like, here's hi. my flyer. Hi, Here, welcome to the church. We're all going to meet together and I'm going to set you up with that girl. <laughs> and this, yeah, that, yeah. Or that, or this group of guys and like they can, yeah. you know, bring you in. And I, so I guess my, my plea is what we did at Benedictine, I think really well was we got creative. We threw those events where we anybody could be there. It was super mm-hmm. fun. And then we went after people who maybe were just kind of standing on the sidelines. Or we went after people who it's like, oh my gosh, like you you are so fun and you are so, you know. So just make sure that you're inviting people in. Maybe it's that, maybe you're a young married couple and you know that there's another couple that probably doesn't know anybody else. Like invite them over to your potluck. Invite, yeah. you know, so it's about meshing with people, but it's also just inviting other people because you might be inviting, you might be inviting this guy, we'll call him um, Kyle. Like this guy that came up to me and was like, yeah, I just don't know where they go anymore. Kyle may end up marrying like your best friend, but you have to be the one that continues to like invite people in. And is it is it a lot of work? Yeah, but is it worth it? Heck yes. The other thing is we weren't, we weren't super picky about our friend group because you just couldn't it's like you love jesus you're breathing let's be friends right? yeah yeah <laughs> and, and of course like totally. you, you, there's a kinship <laughs> with friends and the, you want to be able to click stuff like that but you know especially with the young adult crowd it it, it can be i i really feel for that demographic because you know if, if you you're out of college 
you're not married, don't have kids. Like you can fall through the cracks in terms of our outreach and the church. And it's like, where do you fit in? And um, I, I just encourage everybody to kind of be open to God surprising you with friendships that you might not at first say, be like, hey, you know, I mean, they might be not someone that you would have thought you would have clicked with in high school, but but maybe now with Christ, you've got something deeper in, in common that and, and you might not be, you know, best buds, but you just don't know where it's going to go. And to not like leave those people out yeah. um, and, and just to be open to the Lord again, doing some We call it that, the power of the invite because how many of our conversions, I always say there's two components that I think when I hear people's conversion stories that you hear. One is I was invited. I was invited. I was invited. I was invited three times. We both Someone blew people was off multiple times yep. before. Someone persistently invited you and then you went to confession. Those are like the two where you can almost always hear the power of the invite and then getting them in a spot where they can go and and speak their heart to someone, to, to a priest, to, or even just to be able to share vulnerability and be able to be open maybe for the first time about their wounds. But I just, I really, I really encourage people, especially after COVID. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said the word. But after COVID, I think that people just feel so isolated. I think they feel more alone than ever. I have yeah. a lot of young adults that are like, I forgot how to talk to people. You know what I mean? And, and so we've been really sharing a lot with young adults, like, we got to get back out there and we got to get creative because it's going to be a lot easier to stay in your pajamas and stay home. It really is. It's going to be easier to work yeah. from home and never leave your house, mm -hmm. but that is not where Jesus wants you. He wants you meeting people in person, sharing life, sharing highs and lows, sharing, you know, sharing your faith, you know, getting back into the habit of going to mass. Like those are things that it, are they easy? No, but are they worth it? Absolutely. And yeah. you don't want to stay where you are. I mean, I, I mean, so many young adults are like, I just, I hate where I am right now in my life. And it's like, they're like, I know I'm not where God wants me to be. And I'm like, okay, like, what do you want to do about it? You know? And it's, and I say that with a smile. Cause it's like, God doesn't want this for you. Like this, like you want to be free and happy. And the temptation is to just, you know, work the 80 hour work week or just focus on that and, and not invest in friendships and not invest yeah, in what might be a Catholic social life. To the point where I don't even really know how to make a friend anymore. Like mm -hmm. kids are effortless. Like, do you want to play tag? Cool, we're done. Yeah, like, yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Best friends for life. Yeah. <laughs> but it's and in true. college, it, it tends to be also pretty organic, who you gravitate to and whatnot. Yeah. But as you said, we're in an, a strange age where now we don't even know how to make totally. a how to be make a new friend. Like, I need the steps spelled out for me almost. Yeah. Whereas again, the technology is a part of that too. Where it's as interconnected as we are, we've kind of regressed a bit. Yeah, we don't know how to make friends. We don't know how to ask people out on a date. We don't know how to go on dates. Like we don't, and, and I think you guys are mentioning like, every, we need community. We're made for, as human beings, we're made for communion. We're made for, we're not meant to be alone. Yeah. And as, as disciples, the two things that like are absolutely needed are community and you need mentorship. Like you need someone absolutely. to accompany you. Yeah. And I would love- need living mentors. Yes. Not just- Podcast. Yeah. Not, right. So yeah. in your life. Yes. Right? Much as we love podcasts. Life. Hashtag so Bobby want, and Jackie. I want you guys to share because obviously your marriage has been such a witness and a mentorship to people. And you guys got to go to Rome mm -hmm. with how how many students? Like it was almost 50. 40, yeah, 40. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spring semester. It was like 2018. 2018. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys got to go with, to Rome and you brought your, your, all your kids were with you. Okay. And these, you know, 48 college students got to watch a married couple mm -hmm. in real time with their kids traveling in a foreign country for how many months? Like three, three months? Yeah, months, three yeah. months, yeah. 90 days. And they got, and so most, I, I just wish young, I mean, Bobby and I have a heart for single people and like celibate people. Like people, we try to invite them into our home to befriend them because we know how hard, how hard it is to have community and that stage of life. Like it, I know in my life it was helpful to have married couples because I didn't romanticize like I was I didn't like like oh the grass is greener on the I was like no marriage is e not hard or sorry it's not easy mm -hmm. and having kids is not easy so I'm going to be happy where God has me now mm -hmm. and some day that will be my call but like I didn't romanticize it because I saw it in real life. So mm -hmm. I want you to share mm -hmm. even just the witness of like your guys' witness and like the college students, what that was like spending three months mm -hmm. and how those kids like watched you, how they like saw you model the faith as a husband, wife, because I can guarantee so many people who are watching this or listening do not have holy married couples in their lives. I know mm -hmm. I didn't when I was young and I prayed for them and God started bringing me holy families, moms and dads to show me like, oh, that's what it looks like mm -hmm. to have a good marriage. It's not, it's not right. that you never fight or argue, but like right. I, everybody needs that kind of mentorship, that model of 
that it is possible to have a beautiful marriage based on Christ. So could right. you guys share about mm. your those couple months and mm. in I mean, there's so many stories, but so even many. some glory stories, some some powerful Gosh, stories from that story. time. I mean, I, I just in general to your point. We've had a number of students, those in Florence, and even besides that, say, I've learned the most from you, not from the classroom, not when you gave a talk on campus, but by just watching and observing your family, yeah. just seeing the reality of w- what it is day in, day out. Mm-hmm. I think um, Italy, so Benedictine has a sister school over in Florence. So instead of housing someone there full time, they send a different professor and their family every semester. So we were asked to do it in the spring of 2018. And um it was incredible. I mean, it was life changing for, for so many of us mm-hmm. because what happened was, is we were like phoneless. We were, I mean, it's so cool when you don't have like a lot of the students that went with us, you know, they were like, I don't have to go to a meeting. I don't have to go to sports. I don't have, like, you think about how busy you are. So it's almost like we went, we went away for a while, if that makes sense. And we traveled all over and, um, I, I think we should probably talk about show Visco. I think that would help people to understand. Well, I, I taught my class on jump all the second, which was I love teaching on Jabba II, especially to this generation, because they, they they know of him and they think highly of him. It's always become like, you all think highly of him because your mentors spoke highly of him, but I don't think you know the man. Well, they, they, they so he, know. you know, if they're 17, I mean, he died 17 years ago. Yeah. And so some of them, they were, they were very, young, very little. Very yeah, I don't young. remember. And so, and I really love to build up the story in Poland, the human story, the human background, all the things that helped make him the man that he is. And one of the kind of key themes, I mean, before they had this reading on this, I said, I want you to look out for the word Schrodovisko. And they have no idea what it means. And I just, you know, plant this little seed. And and I just said, I said, my prayer is this semester, this will become our own Schrodovisko. And Schrodovisko is the, is the name that when, when, um, then Carol Vortivo, Jump on Second was stationed in St. Florian's uh, in 1949 in Krakow. This is the beginning of his his outreach to college students. And this is really where World Youth Day began. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is in a, you know un, under communism in Poland, which, you know, our students don't know about communism either. And, and I'll, I'll say to them, you know, this it's not just an economic system. Th- this was a systematic promulgation of atheism, destruction of the family, sexual ethic. And if you were to step out of line, like you're going to be marginalized in one way or another. And all of a sudden they start to see, oh, Maybe it's not the exact same, but there's a lot of similarities to today. And so this Shortovisco means environment or milieu. And it became the name that these students would call themselves as this kind of zone of freedom where Vorti would take them into the mountains, take them hiking. You guys have all seen the like black and white pictures of, you know, with the kayaks and the jump pot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are all these bougie pictures of him. And a lot of times he's like converse. You're like, dude, you're so cool, man. Well, and here's what's so here's what's so crazy though, is the reason why he is in like not in clerics typically is because it was illegal for John Paul II. The priest couldn't be with couldn't be in youth public like with that. Him. The communists would arrest people. Wow. So they would call him Vujek. They called him uncle. And they would kind of like honestly sneak up into the mountains. And that yeah. was where he was able to chat with them and they could ask him anything. And it was like this open conversation. And um, yeah, he talks about how so many of those conversations are were the underpinnings of Love and Responsibility, the book he wrote. So, so this, this begins in the early 50s. And from 53 to 78, every year for two weeks, they went on, this group went on a kayak trip. He got to know like their kids. They got married, had kids, and some got to know their grandkids later in life. But Love for Liberty is published in 1960. So it's really the fruit of him hanging out with these students for 10 years. So we'll go through this, this bio and then we'll read L and R together. And they're just like, our students. And for, it, for people who don't know Love and Responsibility, yeah. it, it's Pope John Paul, like the precursor to Theology of the Body. Yes. Yeah. And Love and Responsibility, you're like, how does a priest? No, have so much insight into about, ma- relationships, oh gosh, yes. marriage, and Dr. Shree, funny enough, yes. wrote for, for those of uh, who aren't like major philosophy people, which Love and Responsibility is a really difficult book to yeah. read if you're not, if you, oh, it's, I yeah, mean, it's even it, for me, it was difficult. Tough. Yeah. So Dr. Shree wrote a book called Love, Men, Men, Women, and the Mystery of Love, which makes it so, it's like Love and Responsibility for those of us who aren't philosophers. Yeah, <laughs> and right. And it is, it is like, really I beautiful. love that book. So thank yeah. God so for fun Dr. Fact. Yeah, go ahead. Fun, I would say fun fact. Um, Dr. Shree, my senior seminar was on a book called Love and Responsibility. It was the first time he ever read it. And, oh I, and I was God. in the class and our class and our conversations became Men, Women, and Mystery of Love. Yeah. And, and it's just so cool it was, The class was going to be on T.O.B. And oh. it, we didn't and, even get to and it. And someone was like, hey, you ought to read Love and Responsibility. First. first. And so they, they spent the whole semester on Love and Responsibility and that semester became the book that you're talking Isn't about. Which is thesis, Pope John Paul's thesis in Love and Responsibility is the opposite of love is use. Mm-hmm. And you can use people it, to use them just for pleasure. You can also use like even your spouse like as a concubine. Essentially, you're just a baby maker. Yeah, like you right. can use people in multiple ways. Yeah. But that like... You so just, to, to love someone is 
to bear responsibility over the person. Yeah. You're not an it. You're not yeah. just a thing. You're not an yeah. object. Right. You are uh, a yeah. person. And by responsibility, I mean, he, 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 there's so many ways he puts this, but he means concern for their good. Mm. Right. Are and you going to put that good, above how you feel, what you want in the yeah. moment? But you wonder, like, I mean, you can wonder, like, how does he know all this about relationships? Oh, no. And like the last chapter, he actually says the word orgasm and you're like, wait, I know. what? It's like, like people are like, pope, the pope. how does the Pope? But, but it makes sense. Like in a very human level, when you do ministry, you know the stories. You like, Sarah, so you and true. I love relationships because we have all those young women come up to us mm. telling us that they're horrific relationships. And that's why yes. we're so passionate yep. about having good relationships and like, ladies, don't settle. I mean, this is why. So like you can imagine like Pope John Paul is with these young people and then they get married and they he is walking, he's accompanying them and he knows the stories. Yeah. He also not only is an amazing theologian, philosopher, but the psycho like the psychological part of him as well and the accompaniment like yeah. as a mentor. Yeah. Just he as a person, just so beautiful. But we we know what that's like because we have people in our lives who are like that right. as well. Yeah. Um but I've, so you guys were having your own Schrodovisco well, in a so, sense. And, and they, you know, this is you're describing them. they could talk to him about anything. Mm-hmm. But he also loved them enough to speak the hard truths into their lives. I mean, he said later in life that when you lower the bar for young people, like it sounds like I'm just going to make it easier on you to believe the gospel. But when you lower the bar, you actually rob them of their chance to be morally heroic. And so the same dynamic was replicated with with us. And in fact, our students by the end of the semester made T-shirts that say Schrodovisco down the arm. I mean, like they love this concept and this idea of making this our own Schrodovisco. And I mean... Conversions were happening and deepening. We've had three marriages come out of that semester wow. in Florence, none of whom were dated at the time, but they all just had these massive conversions and these friendships are forming. And again, they weren't seeking to make that happen. It was just kind of the byproduct of what was happening there. And I can, can oh yeah, oh, go ahead. I was no, gonna say, no, can no. I add, like one of the tough truths I remember you guys sharing was about drunkenness mm-hmm. and how drunkenness in, in scripture is such a grave sin Mm-hmm. That it like St. Paul literally says, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Like those who are drunkards. And so you guys mm-hmm. on that trip, like were kind of sharing that one of those difficult truths that most college students don't think it's a big deal. So could you even right. just share about that? Like, even yeah, just- I mean, we hit a lot of the big ones. Like, I think one of the things that the students said a lot of times is like, they didn't have anybody to go to with those hard questions about whether it's about sex or about underage drinking or drinking or drunkenness or just all those things where you're like, Sometimes they're like, ignorance is bliss, right? They're like, right. and they, so they would say things like, well, drunkenness is when you black out. And we're like, uh, I don't think so. But we used to always tell them, I'm like, look, drunkenness is you basically spit in God's face because the two greatest gifts he gave you is intellect and will. And when you get drunk, you basically say like, I don't, I don't want either. And I, and I don't care that you gave me this intellect and this will. And so, I mean, we, we were able to speak with them about one of the things that we talk about a lot is just that lukewarmness, you know, like okay, so are we, you know, are we the underage drinking police? No. Like, are we, you know, do we, do we sit on a throne and point fingers about all these things that, you know, what's a sin? What's the gray line? How, how drunk is too drunk? Like, you know, everyone's like, we're not going to sit and like, you know, judge everything. But what we kept telling them is like underage drinking, drunkenness, and sexual promiscuity, typically those three, when those three are present, it's really hard to not be lukewarm. And we see communities sometimes especially we call it sometimes the Catholic country club, you know, where it's like you pop the collar and you drink a few and you just try to blend in. And then all of a sudden a couple becomes six. And then next thing you know, you're making out with someone in the back room. And the next thing you know, you're pushing, you know, you're, you know, again, sexual like lines are being crossed individual like, on your own and then with others. And we just kept telling, like we were sharing with them, like, this is what we walked through. We had to make these decisions. Am I going to get drunk? Am I going to go to this party? What am I going to wear? am I going to make out with anybody? Am I going to allow this person to touch me like this? What, you know, like all of a sudden they were like, you guys had, you, you struggled with that. You had, and we were like, yeah. And this is how we had to like make, start making decisions for ourselves. Again, we're not trying to police you. We're telling you where we eventually found that fire for the Lord instead of feeling constantly lukewarm and like, don't look too close. Cause I don't really, really want this. Do you know what I mean? One thing that we've seen across the country, um, and I'm trying to figure out the way to put this, but it's not like these things like avoiding, you know, sins of unchastity and drunkenness is like the be in and in all of the spiritual life. But when you get those things right, chances are other things are falling into place. And because the church in many ways has gotten stronger in the last 20 years compared to like when we were coming up, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't know a soul that went to youth group. I didn't know anybody that went to, you know, March for Life or Student Book Conference, anything like that. And so a lot of these students, 
um, these young people have grown up with a stronger Catholic ethos than we did. But it's it's in some ways, and I've seen this all over the country, where it's 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 easier to warm them up, come to an event, maybe pray a rosary, maybe come to an adoration hour. But one foot's there and one foot's still in kind of a, a, a bastion of lukewarmness. And the party and, life. And the party, you know, yeah. it's like they'll, they'll pay lip service to chastity, but it's like, okay, as long as I don't have sex, yeah. anything before that. And, and it's it's like, look, we're, we're emphasizing these things, not because that's the only thing that matters, but when you don't or when they don't receive attention, we've just seen this become a bastion of lukewarmness and, and just a lack of kind of spiritual urgency and spiritual zeal that you know, maybe when you're in high school and college, it, it, but but it's like, where will they be 10 years later, five years later? And, and and where is this kind of slope taking them? And so, whereas we've seen the students who really catch fire for Christ, um, you know, my question often is, are you or are you not willing to be inconvenienced for the gospel? Because if you're not, why not? Is, is it because maybe you haven't fully gone all in with our Lord? Maybe you're the rich young man who's like, yeah, I think you're great, Jesus. Uh, tell me about these commandments. Well, that's good, but if you want, you know, if you want to go all in, come follow me. It's like I want to hang on to this. It's like what, what's what's spiritually. So it's almost like, yes, these things are incredibly important, and yes, Saint Paul says, you know, drunkenness can exclude you from the kingdom of God, in, in the letter to the Galatians. Um, but what else is underneath that mm -hmm. that is giving rise to these things? Uh, what is spiritually not happening? And have you really just like Mother Teresa at the end of her life wrote to her sisters, Mission of Charity, and says, I fear that some of you still don't know Jesus. I mean, these are yeah. nuns. These are oh, nuns. Yeah. And, 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 given their but, lives. But that can happen to people who've been in youth group all their life right, right. now, right? So it's, it's like, do oh, you- Oh, people you, who look perfect on yeah. the outside, who go to mass every Sunday, or maybe even daily mass. Right, right. right. They could be going to daily mass and you say, I fear that some of you still don't even right. really Jesus. know Jesus. Right. And like, you're holding back there's something you're still holding back. Right. Right. I think the right. other thing that was really impressionable upon the show to Visco students in Italy was like, man, Dr. Swafford and Sarah, like have a really good time. And like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to, it doesn't always have to be centered around, you know, just what they were used to. And I think that the other thing that they said um, that they had never seen before, kind of talking about what we were talking about earlier was they were like, like Sarah, you're so comfortable talking to other like the college guys and Dr. Swafford, you're so comfortable talking to like the college women. They really didn't know how to interact as men and women. Like, can men and women be friends? Yeah. Like, how do you be friends with the opposite sex if it's not like like I had a guy. For an ulterior motive. I had a guy come yeah. up to me after a talk one time. God bless his heart. It was him and this like group of bless like, his, bless his heart. heart. It was him and this like group of guys. <laughs> and they walked up to me and they were like, like I really liked your talk, but like, why would you want to get to know a girl if you weren't gonna sleep with her? Oh my god! Like, what's the point of like getting to know someone if you weren't gonna like sleep with them? And I, bless his heart, I was like, okay, um, thank you so much for asking. You know, I was yes. just like, wow, let's start at the very beginning. So anyway, I just was like, this is where a lot of people are coming from. So I think what they because saw, they've been trained to use people they've been for trained, an end. Yeah, like I'm only gonna, I only want to invest any time with this person because I'm using them for an end game, and my end game is to sleep with them. My end game is to use them emotionally. Emotional like it's so sad, whatever. like to see people as like. I only want to invest time with them because I'm going to use them for some purpose. Like, right. even if it's just like, because yeah. I want someone to be around, right. you know, like totally. I don't want to be alone. So it, like, it kind of piggybacks on that piggybacks on the like, well, why do you party? Why do you get drunk? Why do you look at pornography? Why do you um, feel like you need to do X, Y, and Z, you know, sexually? Like what is like, the issue isn't always the issue, right? It comes down to the seven deadly wounds. I know, we'll have so, Dr. Bob Shoots on to talk about that's that. That's exactly <laughs> right. Oh yes. Come, please, please. So anyway, Swaff and I just started kind of like laying out and, and kind of digging at some of that, like, like why? why do you do what you do? And what is your life about? And what do you, who do you live for? And what do you live for? And where does God fall into that? You know, and like, is he, is he just kind of a, a little, I always call it like the ATM genie in a bottle teddy bear, you know, like where you go to them when you go to him when you need something, or is he like the Lord and King of your life? Yeah. And I think what, what the student saw in Swaff um, and myself was just like, they're like, they love God. Like they love Jesus. Like they love the Eucharist. They love Mary and they're still kind of normal. And like, I don't have to like yeah. lose myself. I'm actually going to find myself in this and they have a great time and they're very comfortable and confident with people of the opposite sex. And like, I want that. It's because we're so comfortable and confident in who we are in our Lord. And there was just something that they just kept, there was kind of this like 
curiosity almost like why are you why are you the way you are and, and it's that peace and, and joy and freedom that the world can't give and they were seeing it in us Does you're that also make sense? yeah and you're also willing to say the things so like maybe their parents never said yeah, like so many par- yeah so many parents like don't even want to talk about sex and stuff like they won't talk about like certain things it's too taboo and when there are people or, or even just the i want to be more of a friend to my son or daughter right. instead of right. yeah. the parent. Right. Yeah, and so when they have people who for the first time are just kind of really honest and real and there's no shame, and it, right. it's so like, oh, wow, this yeah. is so cool. Like when you have people who are not fake, you're not like holier than that, you're, you're no. real. Yeah, and they that, saw it all. It was, yes. well, and it was very, we even had moments where like, oh my gosh, we're like on a subway train, no one's had anything to eat for you know, six hours, like our toddlers, like Getting laying hangry. on the ground, like you've got older kids that are like, yeah. yeah, you just, they saw all of it and they saw, they saw, I think how you have to, you know, what virtue looks like in the big and little things. But also there were days where I was like, okay, I'm about to lose my crap. Everyone just, I mean, and, and they, and they, they, I think they loved even seeing that. Like, we're not perfect. We yeah. will, we will be the first to tell you we're not perfect. But we, we'll lose also, crap we lose all our crap the time, we can, people. We can lose our crap occasionally. Um, but like, <laughs> I really think that Swaff and I, but they saw us like, how do you work through that? You know, how do you look at your spouse and be like, I need you to go grab the stroller, the diaper bag, everything. We just, we are, we're struggling, you know, like, and it was really great. They pitched in, they helped us. But I think more than anything, they saw that like, what do you want? Like, what do you want out of life? And I think it was also in the midst of social media. And, you know, it, I think sometimes they feel like they have to, you know, sometimes it's like, no, just be you, be all you, be authentically you. And it's okay if it's not always pretty, you know, and it's okay if it, and I think that they just found yeah. that kind of, um, I think they found that they could, their soul could kind of relax with us, if that makes sense. Like there wasn't, they yeah. didn't have to put on airs with us. And probably one of my favorite stories, I, I'm probably going to cry when I tell it, but there was one particular student um, that came up to us on the last night. And he, um, the night before he left, uh, his parents told, sat their whole family down and told them they were getting a divorce. Oh. And he didn't tell anybody the whole trip. And he came up to us the night before and he was just sobbing and he was just like thank you for helping me believe in in love again and in marriage again believe in marriage again and i just i still can just see his face and like but I, little did we know that he was going through that and yeah. it just really like makes you step back and go like why like lord like thank you for letting us walk with people in their darker hours and but yeah like we just we we burn to help because we've been in situations like that and you just you need someone to walk with you and like help you to see that it's worth it and that the Lord's worth it. And it's just so beautiful. And, and Swaf, as you've said, like, it's not about rules. No, it's, it's not, not about just no, 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 no. It's about a radical yes to a, a life in Christ. Yeah. Um, I've come to give you life and life in abundance. John ten ten. Like, yeah. um, and it's about enjoying the good things of the earth, you know, a drink or two. It's about, uh, yeah. loving in an integrative way where you're not at war with your head and your heart. You're not mm-hmm. just going from drama to drama and meaninglessness to meaninglessness activity of, of just trying to like numb myself through the day. Completely. Right. Absolutely. Totally. Well, and I think that's also, they, they saw us drink wine with them and have fun with them and be, you know, but it was like, they've never seen us drunk because we don't get drunk. They've never, we don't serve underage people. Why? Not because we're the underage police Nazis, but because we really feel like when you have these things in order and the lukewarmness isn't like always around you, then, you know, God gets to be, I I love in reform wellness, we were talking about how it used to be your priorities, you know, it became plural, like in the fifties, but it used to be like, no, my priority with uh, singular, and I think that that's what they saw in us and what we try to live our life is, is like Christ is our priority. Like the Eucharist is our priority. Like you'll see it in our, in our marriage. You'll see it in our family. You'll see it in all of that. But it's also like, that doesn't mean that you can't have a great time. It doesn't mean that you lose who you are. It means you fully become who God has always meant for you to be. And that is so unbelievably attractive. And that's what our mentors showed us. That's what we were seeing. Like, I am not going to lose myself. I'm going to find myself. And that was the hurdle for me as someone who is a people pleaser and wants everyone to like me and all those things. It was like, what if they, what if I lose myself and all this that I worked for? And it's like, but have you thought about what you're going to gain? I mean, that's like the words that I, I, I needed those words. I, I say them a lot to people. I'm like, okay, just to shed the, the anxiety and to shed the constant pressure and to shed, not that you can always, you know, get away from it, but just to be able to just really live in that zone of freedom that we've talked about, that Shodavisco zone of I can authentically be myself. I can ask hard questions. I can find answers and people love me for who I am, even with all my flaws and my weaknesses. And 
I mean, that's, that's what we want for people. That's why earlier we were talking about find that community, find that group, find that. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but like invest in it because you will never regret it. And do that if you're single, do that if you're married. I mean, yes, like, like well, yeah. we're looking back, I mean, With have families. we, and we, we, we've done this well in later years of our marriage, but, um, we didn't do it well in the first, you know, five, yeah. six years of marriage and find other couples in the similar spot than you and, and, yes. and a place where people will on the one hand, love you enough to speak their hard truths, but also a safe space where you can be real and you can be vulnerable and you can right. be like, I'm not performing right now. And I know you're still going to love me. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a, a group that we get together. We call it first Saturdays for Mary. And so we have what's five other couples or six couples total. And every first Saturday we get together and we, we have drinks and we put a bunch of food on the Island and, um, we have 42 kids between the six couples. It's like kind of chaos and, but the kids play and they have a blast and, um, we bring everyone together. We pray together. We pray over each other. We sing some songs. It's really beautiful. Um, and then the kids go play and every couple grabs a drink and we sit around our living room and every couple shares their high and low of the week or of the month, sorry, of the month. And it's so powerful because you don't go to a potluck and share your high or your low. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? You don't go to like after yeah, church. macaroni, your cold macaroni. Hello, cold salad. salad. And guess what I'm dealing you with? You don't want to brag. And you, you don't want to brag. And dirty and you, laundry. Yeah, totally. And so, um, but we've, we've done this for I think six years now and we, it is, we've come so close to people. And the reason why is because, I mean, it's everything from, you know, the positives and the negatives we we've grown over time, but um, it's, it's the heaviness of life. And back in the day you would, you know, be in your village. And a lot of times it was your own siblings you could share with, but a lot of us don't have that anymore where you live close to your family or you even have people that you're just super comfortable with. So you almost and have they to share like, the faith in the same way that, right, yeah. Right. And they share, they see the world the same way. And so, um, but I always tell people like, talk about just being very real with people. I mean, it's so nice when you walk away. I think it's Chesterton that says, um, true friends begin, begins with the phrase me too. Cause you know, when we were like, we all have little kids and like, literally you're sitting around talking about like, I haven't slept in days. Mm. Like, you know, like we, we've been through a lot. Why don't I love every second? Why don't I love every second? Catholic guilt, guilt, it's like all the things. And, but again, to have another couple, you know, I'll never, I laughed so hard one night, this one couple, he like puts his arm around his wife and he's like, well, we haven't spoken in two days, so this is going to be good. You know, like it was just, I died, I died, but you feel so normal. You're like, oh my gosh, like this is real, you know? And, um, they had to you, sleep on the couch. Yeah. Last like you, night, or you uh, I mean, we, and we can laugh about yeah. it and be like, yeah, you're going through that, you know? And, and, or like, you know, one of them that someone showed their kid porn in the bathroom at school at 12 years old. And it's like, how do you, who do you go to? What friends do you go to when you're like, how do I parent this? How do I, you know, being diagnosed with ADHD or having these things that your kids are going through and then also things your marriage is going through having people walk away from the faith in your family having you know kind of sitting around and talking about those hard things that you can take there and so we encourage people like the only regret we have is that we didn't start doing this when we were newly married like to have another couple even people at mass when you're like with your baby at mass and they're screaming and you like andy will stop people at mass and be like this is the hardest time. You're doing great. Do you need Aww. a beer? Like, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll stop people in the grocery store and be like, you're doing great, man. You're doing great. Like hang in there because you just, you feel for people and you wish someone would have stopped. I wish someone would have stopped me in the grocery store and been like, you've got this, you know, like you can do this because you do, you feel like, you're like, I'm insane. I'm crazy. I'm not doing this well. You're just constantly thinking you're just falling apart. Yeah. And it's good to have couples that are walking with you going, yeah, like this is really hard on our marriage. Like having a newborn is really hard on our marriage and like talking about that um, or whatever is kind of your, your suffering at the moment or your cross at the moment. So if, if, you're, if you're a young couple out there, if you are a couple that's been married 20 years out there, anything you can do, even if it's just, like again, we have five couples, even if it's just having one couple that you go to dinner with or you have their family over and you let the kids play and you just like, you don't have to be super deep all at once. Like it'll grow over time. It'll be organic. Um, but first Saturdays has been so amazing. And then also our kids have become close with these other families, kids. So I always say like, you know, when they go off, I mean, a lot our kids are in high school, but when they go off and they're like, you know, real crap hits the fan. I know they're going to call these guys. It's like, I've been praying with Benedict since I was eight. I've been praying with Isaac. I've been praying with Bo. I've been, you know, these are my, these are my guys, you know? And, um, and it was really cool. Just recently we had a bunch of them got confirmed and everybody's confirmation sponsor was a parent from Aww. first Saturdays without even knowing it, without so realizing it. see other dads it. praying, other moms praying. Like it, 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 really it, cool. it, it's, you can create a new normal this way. Mm -hmm. Like they don't feel weird. Cause like, oh, my friends are running toward Jesus in the same way. Yeah. Right. Well, so, and even, even, um, to see other parents so it's not just my dad it's not right. just my mom like no they're the crazy you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. that's Radicals. so that's so important for a young person totally. to see yeah. and to feel like i'm connected to something bigger and i'm not just hearing it from my parents totally um about jesus about the principles of a good life like oh okay there's 
and and because they may not hear it from mom and dad anymore right exactly um but it's like oh because so-and-so said it it actually sinks in and you're like i've been saying that for 10 years but they, right, roll, right. they roll their eyes at yeah, you. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, it just sounds different yeah. coming it hits yeah. different when it's somebody else's uh, yeah i mean my parents. prayer is like when our kids become teenagers like they hear a speaker who's like oh, reaffirming know. everything yeah that because i've had saying. parents come up to me like thank you for saying that because my child like my daughter will not listen right. whatever won't listen I'm, to like, me. I know. I'm like listen i'm like i'm just trying to reaffirm what you're teaching and someday my kids are going to be in that same place where they're going to need someone else it's to so give true. that same affirmation yeah, of just the truth. It's a hundred percent true. Yeah. But yeah, it's been so fruitful in our lives. Yeah. Awesome. Can yeah. We, yeah. Can I make a bathroom break? I really need a bathroom break too. <laughs> yes. The what, men. Do you know what time we're at? So Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Oh my gosh. You've been evangelizing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was coming up. Yeah, after, Bened- after Jesus Benedictine, Jesus Benedictine, jiu-jitsu is like the thing you evangelize. Oh You've been gosh. evangelizing me for a while. And I know, <laughs> funny enough, a number of Christian guys I respect who have gotten yeah. into this and gotten their families into it. And I like to exercise to get away from people and not be touched. The, um, the introvert <laughs> is like, I don't want people to And touch you it. just are so like all about it. And so can you explain the draw for it, the the lessons you've learned from... And why jujitsu over anything else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, so part of it's happenstance. My colleague in philosophy, um, uh, Jim Madden, he's been doing it with his family for about six, seven years. And he's been talking to me for a while and I finally acquiesced. And so last year and a half, we've all been doing it. So I've got everybody from my seven-year-old son, my 11-year-old daughter, my 15-year-old and 16-year-old sons. We're, we're all in it. And, and you. And me. And, yeah. and I... I at first, it was self-defense for my older boys was what I was looking for. And then I just fell in love with the art. And I'm like, I got to get my daughter in this. I got to get my other son in this. And um, I mean, truthfully, I would trade all my years of football in a second to start this at 10 years old. Wouldn't blink an eye. I mean, I would do that in a second. Um, for a number of reasons. I'd say the kids, what they'll tell you first thing off, if you ask them, like, what's it giving you? They will just say the confidence. Because they're, they're, uh, you can come from team sports and excelling, but there's something about like knowing I did that and I'm getting, and it, it's something you get better at. And it's, I love it for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's not nearly as macho as, it, as you might think. I mean, it, jujitsu for one, by the way, it's not like people think it's like Kung Fu. I mean, it's, 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 it's like wrestling plus joint locks and chokes and you know, it's uh, submissions. And so it's, it's more oh submit submissions than like striking. And there's no striking involved. Right. So it's like uh, one of our friends said, nowadays like you could get sued for like punching like punching someone like in a bar. if you strike even in self-defense you could get sued but versus if you like jitsu if i just sub you and like take it to the ground new jitsu. Like, <laughs> quiet now quiet sleep now. baby yeah. sleep no i'm a little biased but like jocko willink the, the navy seal i mean his hierarchy of martial arts is number one jiu-jitsu mm. two wrestling three kickboxing like and it's i mean when you google like what's the most lethal martial art jiu-jitsu very Not often even comes up first like, hmm. oh, God, it often comes up first <laughs> and, but it's yeah so um <laughs> We know you're number one, Jay. But it's a finesse game. Like when I started, I would get destroyed by guys half my size because they knew what they were doing. And I still, I mean, people that are really well trained are, I mean, it's it's not about like macho macho, which for me back in the day, like high school, like football player, like, oh, I can out bench you, blah, blah, blah. Like this is like, you can't go by looks because like it ain't about like looking like you can do something. It's about like, do you have the skill set to, and it just, it, to me, it comports with the spiritual life too. Now here, I'm I'm, I'm no, spiritualizing this, but I, but I, I, yeah, I want to hear the, the I want to hear the theology. I mean, maybe this is just well, theology and jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. one side thing is I meet more non-Catholics at the jujitsu gym than anywhere else, and, and to get my my kids around that, and and to, I always said this, I want them to be able to navigate the world and be comfortable in their own skin, in season, out of season, around Catholics and not around Catholics, and so I think that's that's good for all of us. Uh, but two on this, and maybe this is just me philosophizing about jujitsu, but like you're taking, I mean, the whole point is like, what does that person do and how can I take their momentum and use it against them? And to me, you look at the cross, it's like, here's this onslaught of sin and death and the evil one. And Jesus our Lord, our yeah. Lord, the divine jujitsu artist <laughs> just right. turns it against itself. But that's, that is what jujitsu is all about. What the I devil mean, meant for harm, yeah. God Jesus made I mean, you, you know, where's Genesis 45, five and 50 verse 20, Joseph says, you know, you meant it for evil, but that God allowed it that many would be saved. Um, and where it came from, it came out of judo and some of the stories that I've seen, some documentaries, like, like it starts with a guy who like was not very athletic. It was like, how do I, how do I face off against a guy who is more athletic than me, stronger than me? And so the whole thing is like any, I mean, my, our head guy, he's had 54 pro MMA fights and 
he wrestled in college and he's like, look, not everybody can wrestle because wrestling has a lot to do with how athletic you are, et cetera. He's like, but anybody can learn jujitsu. So it's sort of like, it's the, it's the art that can level the playing field and it's absolutely lethal, but it's, it's so, it's also safe though. So this is, I mean, last thing I'll say is, you know, to, for Sarah and my in-laws, I, I had to make this case, <laughs> oh, right? Oh gosh, you had to make it. I was like, <sighs> I think you're way more likely to get hurt on a football field. Because in jujitsu, yeah, you're being choked and it's joint locks. And if someone were to like keep pressing, like you're going to break something, right? But the moment you tap, the person stops. So you can shut it off whenever it starts to get dangerous. In the middle of a football play, you can't be like, hey, I'm about to break my leg. Could you stop? Like it, it doesn't yeah. work like no, that. No, walk it off. Yeah, walk it off. And I guess maybe last, it's like, okay, in training the man or the woman, it's like, do you want to be? I mean, I love sports. I'm not trying to anti sports culture. But it's such an end in itself in our country. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love sports as a means to character development. But I worship the that altar for so long. And I, I, I don't want my kids to do that. And it's like, okay, at the end of the day, do you want to be able to throw a ball? Or, God forbid, hopefully it never, you never need it, but be able to kill someone if you needed to. And it's like, what really matters at the end of the day? And, and honestly, like, it's even changed how I, as a fan. I mean, I still am a fan of sports. But, like, it's – in football, we use always military metaphors. It's like, this isn't really a fight. I mean, jiu-jitsu is a little bit closer. UFC MMA is, is even closer, but it's like, you know, y y you think you're tough. I thought I was tough, but this kind of doing this really relativizes that whole scene. So if someone's coming at you, <laughs> I just have a practical question. <laughs> like if they're coming at you and you know jiu-jitsu, but they're coming at you with kickboxing, they're coming at you like you're standing up, like how do you get them to, because jiu-jitsu has to happen on like the ground, right? Well, to, like you learn how to like get them there. No, I'm still at the beginning, right? So I'm a year and a half in, so I, I, I'm not your black belt guru by any means. But there's stats that'll say like from 70 to even 90% of fights end up on the ground at some point. I mean, most fights end up on the ground at some point, and that's where jiu jitsu thrives. So, yeah, I mean, it, uh, someone, if you watch like UFC, you watch like a jiu jitsu guy and a karate guy, what's going to happen is the jiu jitsu guy is going to get into the karate guy. And usually, usually the karate guy can't keep the jiu jitsu guy off of him. I mean, the, he's going to get up into him. He's going to get, like, in other words, I can stand like three feet away from you and you could hit me. But if I get up in your grill, you can't swing in the same way. So, self defense, yeah. the best thing you can do is hug him. Because they can't. I'm just, like just going to get, can't, just they gonna can't get in your grill. And eat, so even, if I pull, so even if I pull you on top of me, I mean, you just can thrive with my back on the ground. Like I can just pull you on top of me. And all of a sudden, before you know it, we're flipped and I'm on top of you. And and what I love about it, it's almost like this, uh, it's like a Jedi fighting, right? I don't need to hurt you. I can just absolutely disarm you and show you that I'm in control of you and you can't. I mean, there, there was a story just in the last six months uh, in Chicago, a Seven Eleven, like some dude was 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 giving these uh, people trouble, harassing them, and there was a black belt jujitsu. I don't know if you saw the story or not. And he, the move's called a gift wrap. He got this guy on the ground, had his arm pinned back, sat on him for nineteen minutes until the cops came. Now this is like, <laughs> I mean, this is like a nineteen. I mean, respectfully, like, I, I, this is like a, a nineteen twenty year old you know guy who's sitting ready to like you know give people trouble and rob a Seven Eleven. And this older jujitsu black belt was able to, without hurting him, without throwing a punch, disable him, disarm him, and pin him down. The guy was like, help, get off me. I mean, there, there's like a, no, no, for <laughs> real. Like, video of like it. Google it's this thing, funny. Google 7-Eleven Chicago jujitsu. Yeah. And the picture is hilarious of this guy just tying him up in a pretzel. <laughs> And this guy's just completely immobilized. And that's the beauty my, of jiu-jitsu. As the, as the mom and the wife of the jiujitsu artist, my favorite thing about it is, like Swaff said, it makes them more confident and more cautious. Because you walk into a room and you're like, I know I could defend myself. But you also walk into a room and you go, I don't know what everybody else knows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they could be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. And so I think for the kids, it's just, it's helped them to be like, especially for Kate, Kate's really good. Jeez. Like Kate is really, really good. This is my 11, my 11, like, or 11 year old if, daughter if is really, really her, good. I'm like a hundred pounds more than it, but like, it's not easy for me to do whatever I want. And it's like, that's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. Awesome. And the stupidest thing I've ever said is, is it a good workout? Cause like I went up one day and watched them and they are just like drenched in sweat because it's one of the few martial arts that you don't, you go full on every time. So like in kickboxing or something, you can't go full on cause you're going to kick someone in the head and then you quit. <laughs> practice whereas in jiu-jitsu you go until someone taps so it's it's literally you're going full on every time so they're just drenched in sweat yeah your kids your kids have put me in pain like <laughs> trying I mean, to practice a, on few, you. a few times <laughs> my 16 year old su submitted me this summer like yeah. i mean if you i weigh like 100 pounds he submitted me which think about it's a skill game think about for the confidence of a young man and you're not letting him win no, no not at all no yeah. like i mean, I, I beat dad yeah like that that's <laughs> but, but in so, terms of 
yeah, you know, totally. those yeah. initiation processes yeah. of becoming a man. Like that's you're so great. You guys just made Swaf's day. Thanks for asking about like jujitsu. Yeah, well, you got one. Like, he got to, he got the moment. I feel like I'm gonna get sucked in eventually. Um, oh. Even with with the kids I with our, da- our daughters Jackie, are, yeah, yeah i think they would thrive. i think they would lot. thrive and the, the longer he looks at me with those eyes swafford does <laughs> i know i'm going to you're the next victim yeah i will be sucked I into love it. I love it. okay we need to land the plane because we could I talk it was gonna be four forever hours. and we'll just have to have you guys on again because there's so many things i want you guys to share that we didn't even like it's, done we're, we're already like done. past the Twist hour the and a half Twist okay the arm. so the last thing is i want you to share the project that you are you have just finished that came out with Ascension. Can you share a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, so exciting. Go for it. Yeah, what we so, believe. so what we believe, The Beauty of the Catholic Faith, it's it's a book that Marcelino D'Ambrosio and I wrote. Uh, and it's also a video series with Sarah uh, and Marcelino and myself that we filmed in Rome at 30 holy sites. So it's sort of a... It's an overview of what we believe, but it's also who we are. And Christianity is not just an idea, but a way of life. Um, and, and, and the like going through all that content in Rome at these sacred sites. It's almost like a pilgrimage yeah. uh, in Rome. And, and it's, um, you know, let, let Sarah jump in here, but it really is, is meant to also dovetail really well with Father Mike Schmitz's catechism in a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the two are going to kind of be parallel with one another. It was really beautiful. I mean, it is like a pilgrimage going over there, but it, we what we did is they took, Andy did an amazing job. Him and Marcelino wrote the book. And then they we basically took the creed and just broke it down and went through all the churches. And um, just really the Holy Spirit was just really, we got access to some places that, I mean, we were in the prison that St. Paul and St. Peter were in together. We got to go down there and pray. And um, they were just, to be honest, it was kind of lucky because at, because of COVID, a lot of things were shut down. And we had this wonderful yeah. producer from CNN. Um, she was Italian. She would walk up to, she got a special access to so many places. So we were able to film just in some incredible, incredible places. And then Swaff and I just love Rome. I mean, um, just the, the stories, like it's almost like, you know, the blood of the martyrs of the seat of the church. And you could just feel it. It was almost like the Holy Spirit was like, no, go here, no, go here. I mean, we were being led. And one of the really beautiful things for us was the camera crew that was with us. We had a 16 person camera crew and most of them were not Catholic or fallen away Catholics. And so I'm like, these poor guys, I mean, they literally are filming us talk about every aspect of our faith of why we love the church of, you know, and then we're in these stunning churches. I mean, Mm -hmm. just absolutely beautiful. And so it was neat to watch it through their, through their eyes. And, um, we really feel like this, what we believe was we could have done it. Anybody could have done it 10 years ago and it would have been great, but it coming out right now when we are in such a crisis and so many people aren't going to church right now, people aren't going back to mass. Um, people are confused and frustrated with, you know, how things are going in the church. And it's just so neat to take it back to the roots, back to like square one. We're going back to where it all began and really seeing like, what did our Lord really mean for the church? What did the Holy spirit, you know, Pentecost look like? What did, what did that all look like? And then kind of visit all these holy sites and these saints and these stories and just be like, dang, we are a part of something that is just so much bigger than us. And it is really, it was phenomenal. We had such a blast. And it's sort of, you know, what does it mean to me to be Catholic? And Catholic, you know, we often hear it means universal and you know, cataholos, I mean, fullness or according to the whole. So in a sense, yes, it's universal for everyone, but it's also the fullness of life, the fullness of truth. Uh, being Catholic is not like doing Christ and some extra things. Like being Catholic is to be fully Christian with nothing left out. Mm. Um, and so it, that, that really comes through. And like yeah. part of the study, so there's a book, there's a workbook, and there's also videos. Um, in the workbook, there's a the equivalent of the Bible timeline, a catechism timeline. Mm. Like that the catechism is not, it's not, it's not just a bunch of ideas or doctrines. It's, an, it's a narrative. It's your story. It's my story. It's our story. And so to kind of present the faith in that way, akin to the Bible timeline, but via the catechism and the creed and the faith and this great story of 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 saints and history and philosophy and theology and to do it on site it was just really a special and we experience. were we begged them like ascension so great you guys know but we begged them we're like please 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 make this affordable because people need this and so you can get the book that they wrote the workbook all the videos digitally and the chart for 30 bucks. Oh my gosh. You can do the whole thing for 30 bucks. Yeah. And I told them, I was like, this is incredible. And there's discussion questions. You can do a study. You can do it yourself. You can, I mean, you can do it on your own, obviously. Right. But having that and then doing even, even Father Mike's catechism in a year, I think the Holy Spirit and then having the Eucharistic revival coming up, like, yeah. it's just like, I think the Lord is really helping people like, remember why you fell in love with the, like, 
remember why you fell in love with the church yeah. again. Like, what does the church offer you? And it's, I think to right now it can be very tainted or it can be very like, a lot of people are just, you know, disillusioned and kind of annoyed with a lot of things that are going on. And it's like, is this really what the Holy Spirit had in mind right. for the church? Like, right. mm. and what is it that the Lord really wanted when he established, when the church was I think in my conversion, it's like, you know, you love Jesus, but church, but what Dr. Shree did for me through scripture was connect Jesus to the church. And I think same thing here. It's like, yeah. it's all Jesus. It's Jesus from beginning to, because a lot of times I think, I think this is right, that, that a non-Catholic, and, and I studied my first master's, it was at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, um, thinks of it in a zero-sum way. That if I give a piece of the pie to Mary, to the sacraments, to the Pope, I take them away from Jesus. Whereas a Catholic doesn't view it that way. It's really a matter of participation. It's Jesus mm -hmm. through the sacraments. It's Jesus through my relationship with the saints. It's Jesus through all these things. And, and to think of the church less as merely a, an institution and more as the... The truth of it is the mystical body of Christ. It's about Christ from beginning to end. Um, it's it, it's 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 a, it's it's the Eucharist source and summit, right? As Saint Irenaeus said, the Eucharist attunes our, our our thinking is attuned to the Eucharist. The Eucharist attunes our way of thinking, and so I think this that's what really comes yep. out. It, so it's I mean, we really wanted to recover the Jewish roots of our faith, um, the the kind of sense of the early church, the the fathers. Marceline D'Ambrosio is an expert on the Church Fathers, and he yeah, really so brought great. that in. And so and I really brought the kind of biblical scripture component, and and, and then with Sarah there, it was just kind of a great synergy. Um, all together, and the camera crew again, like they're just to brag about them. Um, gorgeous bowstring. They they they've done like they're like yeah we were with George Clooney last week and they, I mean like they do high level stuff. The videography is stunning. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I and I love that like because was it when you were doing Romans or Hebrews the Bible study for and and one of you were saying that one of the sound guys yeah, was who was so not fun. Catholic was like listening like he's like i was supposed to be listening for like planes and cars but <laughs> yeah. i was so like distracted, in, distracted by your was it was it roman it, it was rome yeah. it's the same same film crew same oh, guy. Was it? that guy was with us in rome oh yeah it was when gosh. i was going through original sin and and he's like i've never ever heard anybody talk about original sin that way and it was so funny and this his is, mom was wiccan we had like yeah, so like, we have so oh many great like, conversations like not anti but just unchurched right. yeah, like, like just, just your classic yeah. nun he's like never been exposed to the gospel mm. and wow yeah so we think it's really great because it's what what we believe but it I mean, again, like if you're, if you've been Catholic for 60 years, I think you'll get something out of it. If you are kind of like going to mass every once in a while, I think you'll get something yeah. out of it. It's really any age. But any I think stage. a seeker who knows nothing about the church doesn't have faith. Like if you are open to seeking, I think this is also the study for you as well. Hey, and guess what? You could like have community, like as friends at church, like hey, <laughs> with wine, come, come over come and dinner, with, like, have, like, That's a, right. like watch the episode and come over and chat about it. That, That's right. We did that actually with some friends a couple times that we did. What Galatians. was it? And, Re and Revelation, right? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. We do both. That's and so good. with other couples and with other single people, it was It's a awesome. great way to see people get people together. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you know yeah. what's cool about that? And they do the that. hard work for you. They well, already set it all up well, for Sarah you. Does yeah. But like even like our coming together and dating, like having this kind of common input, like studying theology of Benedict and where something is kind of forming the two people at the same time mm. gave us something to kind of gel together, kind of build our lives upon. And, and it, whether it's like this study or other book studies, it's kind of neat to have a common formation together as sort of, it's what happened to Florence with those students. There's something that kind of fuels the friendship and or the relationships that emerge from that. Yeah. And it's kind of a common, where, or otherwise, you know, where you're not like always explaining to the other person, well, this is why I love Jesus, or this is why I love the church. Like it's coming in together, we're seeing it together and we're sharing it together. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. All right, you guys. We can and will talk more. We will. Please we'll have, have, to have you back. again because we I have really so many to... other questions that we didn't even get to. Part all two. the questions. I have, as our little Zayla Can we just praise you? I, I mentioned yeah. earlier, yeah. like the need for a living mentor, but following Bobby and Jackie and listening uh, to their words and sitting at their feet, even from afar, would be a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you both for all that you, you do. Guys are, we love I you guys so I much. always say they're like our like cheerleaders you want in your pocket. No. And they're like Mr. and Mrs. Affirmation. You're good enough. We you're smart enough. And gosh, gosh darn, darn it. it. Hey, you like, all are easy to cheer for. We're so. proud of you guys. We love you very much. Thank but you. In the, in the meantime, us, uh, yeah. Sarah and Dr. Swafford, where can people go to follow you, to read your to books, find your stuff, to find out more of your Emotional virtue. We, you yeah, have we have the Swafford's.com is where everything is housed now, which is really wonderful. And yeah, we, we absolutely love being and walking with people. So there's a place to contact us on there and all of all of the stuff, all of the books and all of the DVDs and what we believe is all there too. Cool. 
We love you guys. Thank you for having God bless. us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for watching and listening. And we hope you join us next time. Like, comment, subscribe, share this episode with Do it. everybody you Do know it. and you love and you don't love. No, you hope <laughs> you love everybody. Maybe you don't like them. <laughs> Do it. See you next time. Do it. God See you bless. next time. Bye. Whoa, what did you think of that episode, Bobby Angel? Tell us in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things now. Or don't. Do whatever you want. Whatever you want. You have free will. God bless.